Britain has some of the most congested roads in Europe. And it's the emergency services on two wheels that can scythe through the traffic and get vital help where it's most needed, fast. The bike squads of Essex Police and West Midlands Ambulance Service race to protect the public and save lives. Coming up, a teenage boy has a life-threatening infection. I don't want to hurt you. Essex Police tackle drunks on South End Seafront. You just had a bit too much to drink, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah? I've had loads of us. Oh, and a dear. man's lost several pints of blood through a rectal tear. So the bleeding this morning, what time did that start? All night. Birmingham, mid-afternoon. In the busy city centre, the biker paramedics are waiting for a call. And it's not long before one comes in. On duty, Steve Harris. Steve's responding to a 999 on the other side of the city. A child's developed a serious infection following surgery. On his Yamaha FJR 1300, Steve can sprint across town faster than an ambulance. The bikes carry all the same equipment as an ambulance and are fitted with our cameras, so we arrive at the scene of an incident the second they do. Infections left untreated can spread to the blood system, causing septicemia. Some types of septicemia have a death rate of 50%. It's a rapid killer. Sufferers can die within hours of first symptoms showing. And for every hour that passes, the mortality rate rises by 7%. It's vital that Steve gets there fast. journey takes him just five minutes. Found some ambulance. Okay, tell me what's happened. Yeah, the appendix operation, right? Yeah, and, uh, how long ago? About two weeks ago. Before. Okay. And uh, well, we had our hospital appointment this morning. Yeah. And uh, he's a bit red since he's been back. So he's been to the appointment? Yeah. yeah. Did he have a dressing on it? They took it off after about yeah. they, they took it off? Yeah. Did they say everything was okay, was doing well? Was it hurting when he went to the uh, hospital? No. And what's your name? Hassan. Hassan? Yeah. How old are you, Hassan? 14. Okay. Infections are a result of bacteria getting past the body's defences, often via open okay. scars. Hassan's had keyhole surgery via the hurt. navel to avoid well, scars and an abscess has formed. Under the skin, tissue is dying, leaving behind a hole which has filled with pus. Pus is a mixture of the white blood cells that are fighting the infection, dead tissue and bacteria. Untreated, the abscess will grow bigger and bigger. What happened with this? Were you just sat there and it started? Or yeah, were you, I was lying down and I couldn't be itchy. Mm -hmm. I itched a bit and then... Uh, not it just find the corner. Yeah. And then I felt something. Look at it. It's coming out. Okay. I mean, you've obviously got an infection. Are you on any medications or tablets yeah, at the moment? Yeah. Are you on antibiotics? Yeah. You got a temperature as well, ain't you? A high temperature is a worrying sign. It shows Hassan's body is fighting a severe infection that may have spread further than the belly button. If it's spread to the blood, there's no time to waste. Steve must get him to hospital as quickly as possible. I mean, obviously we want to pop him down and get it cleaned out properly. Yeah. Uh, who'll be going with him? Mum. Mum? OK. What we're going to do, is that's not hurting where I'm touching, is it? A bit. A little bit? All right. That's going to keep oozing for a little while. Just to confirm, ambulance will be required uh, for this patient. Every year uh, in the UK, 17,000 people visit uh, hospital because of skin abscesses. Now, uh, in critical cases, uh, bus, patients uh, may end up in intensive care. Uh, there's little I can do other than just keep it uh, dry and clean until the ambulance gets here. OK. So when it started, you phone for the ambulance or did you Where's wait? The point the hospital? They, they hold up, bring him in. Yep. 
but um, uh, because it was coming out really badly. Yeah. And he couldn't get up before. Yeah. So uh, we decided to bring the ambulance up. Okay. Right. You up there, mate? Then. Should we get you up the children's? Yeah. Was there a clean one in there? No. Yeah. Okay. I'll get you some of the ambulance as well, mate. So no, don't don't cover it up. There was a lot of pus coming out. Uh, it had obviously been seeping before my arrival, and even all the time I was here, it, there was a continual seepage there. Um, it's one of those really where, you know, if, if you were to apply pressure, uh, as you would to a burst boil or something, then uh, you, you're going to get a lot more out. Uh, but that's not for me to do. Uh, that's for the hospital to sort out. I mean, there's obviously an internal infection uh, around the wound site. There's been a build-up. He's, he's had basically a, like a type of abscess underneath the, uh, the wound uh, that's been building up and building up over the last couple of weeks. And it gets to a point, as with a pimple or a boil, uh, where the pressure inside is such that it just finds the weakest point and then bursts. Still to come, Steve Harris deals with a knee injury. Oh, oh, that right. Oh, come on. Romance that means good boy, doesn't it? Yeah. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Birmingham, midday. Paramedic Mark Hayes is on duty. I'm going to Aston. Uh, it's coming through as a burn. It's, uh, a fire person's reported. Lovely, thank you very much. Hello, you alright? What's your first name? Mary. Mary, how are you feeling? Alright. Mark checks Mary's mind? mouth and Lovely. nostrils for signs of soot how, yeah. as an indication of how much how, smoke she's inhaled. Put that back on. How thick was the smoke? Black, you couldn't see. No. And how long were you in the smoke for? Five, ten minutes. Five, ten minutes, okay. And apart from breathing in the smoke, You've not burnt yourself or anything at all. You've not injured yourself in any other way. Right. So can okay, you main, in the maintain UK, oxygen There saturation. are over 60,000 house fires every year, killing over 400 people. 80% of them die from smoke inhalation. It takes just a few breaths of smoke to cause unconsciousness. Smoke prevents the lungs from absorbing oxygen and may also contain toxins like carbon monoxide and cyanide. Tell me, how old are you again? I'm 89. <laughs> 89? My life. OK. Let's pop this round your shoulders. So it was a, a pan that caught fire? Frying pan. Frying pan. All right. What we're going to do is do a few checks on you. We've got an ambulance on the way. Oh, I don't want to go now. Right. All I want to do is, I mean, I can see there's soot on your face, there's yeah. soot up your nostrils. Yeah. What we do as a precaution is we go off to hospital anyway because it's... I ain't going to hospital. All right, well, I'll tell you what then, Mary. We just pop this off you and we'll leave your pulse oximeter on. Deep breath in. And again. I know. Lovely. Right, that's good. Do your blood pressure. You seem to be uh, taking it in your stride. You're, you're coping remarkably well. In the flat, I'm thinking about yeah. smoke. Okay. Did you decorate it? Well, the main thing is you're okay. Yeah. Flat can be repaired, repainted, oh, whatever. Oh, yeah, your health is more important. Yeah. I'm alright. Just pop you that back on. Right, Mary, I know you're going to be stubborn and I know you're going to put up a fight. When we take your oxygen off, your oxygen saturations drop, yeah, to below a reasonable level, yeah. And I would suggest that's because of the, the, the smoke that you've inhaled. 
As a result of the smoke, Mary's lungs aren't working efficiently. The O2, with the oxygen on, um, our oxygen saturation is 99%. Um, I took the O2 off for, uh, just for a few minutes to see whether there was any altering, uh, altered level of uh, O2 sats, and the sats actually dropped down to 94. Obviously, we can see that the soot in the, uh, the nasal passages, um, so obviously this lady would need to be monitored at hospital because of that. Obviously, she doesn't want to go, and I think she's going to be trouble, aren't you? Um, so uh, I'll see whether I can work the fly mouth charm, but I've got a feeling it's not going to work today. You need to go to hospital no. for a checkup. No, You're not my love. No, I'm good, though. Right. The figures tell me that you're not. Well, I, feel I know you feel. I know. I, I can't force you. All I can do is advise you. And I'm not in. I'm not in the habit of taking people to hospital when it's not needed. We've we've seen that your oxygen saturation drops when you're off oxygen, and and that's the problem. When you inhale smoke, smoke's warm. Right. Let's do a deal, right? You see this reading? This is your oxygen saturation out of 100. That's good now. If you say you're okay, it'll stay up there, yeah? If I take this off and it drops below 96, that says that it's not okay. Will you go with me then? No. Trust me, yeah? Will you agree to come with me then if it drops? I'll meet me halfway, Mary. Come on. Meet me halfway. Take it off then, all right? Come on, meet me halfway. We'll just leave it for a couple of minutes. If that drops, I don't know what you're doing. This is a fix. <laughs> okay. What we're going to do is Mary gonna might have escaped a trip to hospital, but Mark still wants her checked over in the ambulance. Mary's 89 years young. Uh, she's now <laughs> hypertensive. Other than that, she tells me she's fit and well. Um, I have uh, found another problem. She's stubborn. Mary, will you do me a favour? No, I'm not. Stay. No, just stay I'm here a minute. No, 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 no. That's fine. I'm just do me. On. Just do me a favour. Just stay there a second. Do you mind if we go and have a look at your flat and we'll find out whether you're able to live in it as it is? Yeah. And then we'll pop that. If you just keep an eye, yeah, we're going to see what's. Are you all right for me to go and have a look at the yeah. state of your flat? Just relax, Chick. She's adamant she's not going to go. She wants to go back to a flat. Are we saying that a flat's OK for her to go back into and live? Yeah, all the smoke's clear. Just needs to um, clear up in the kitchen, but it's clear to go up there. Um, just this pan that's heated up. I mean, and there's no real damage to that, but what, what's happened is it, it gives off thick black smoke as it's burning. We can see from the walls and the ceiling, there's been dark smoke. So, I mean, that's from, from the wall and that's what she's inhaled. But we can see on every single surface, there's a layer, a layer of soot. She's telling us that she's been in here for five to 10 minutes. So, you know, I, I can't force her, but, I'm really unhappy about her not going. Even after a small house fire, the soot and odours can linger for months. How are we doing, Mary? You pleased to see me? No! <laughs> In colour for your day. Oh, it's only because we care. OK, should we go walk, take a walk upstairs? You're all right, watch you don't trip as you get down. I found somebody that's more stubborn than my wife. Um, Mary's uh, adamant she's not going to hospital. She's got now back in a flat. Uh, there's nothing we can do. We've let Caroline know, and they're going to try and get in touch with next of kin. South End on Sea, home to over 150,000 people, and popular seafront attraction on the Essex coast. It's a typical British seaside resort complete with the longest pleasure pier in the world. And it's home turf for Essex's only female biker cop, PC Lucy Watson. Lucy's beat takes in the town centre, where she keeps an eye on everything on the road. But today there's been a 999 call to the seafront. Kids are reported to be causing trouble on the dodgems. When Lucy arrives, there are no kids in sight. False alarm. 
But before she leaves the scene, it appears there's someone else who may need her attention. We've got a drunken man on the seat front. If you go down there, he's on his own, laying on his bed. The water's coming a bit further up to him. I'll go and have a look. Yeah. Right, okay, thank you. I'm just dealing with a concern for welfare on the seafront. Um, very drunk male. I'm just with him now. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm so on. You all right? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Do you know, I'm, I'm from Newcastle. From Newcastle? Yeah. Are yeah. you lost? No. <laughs> You're a long way from home. I follow them. You feel, yeah. I can see that. I'm doing anything wrong. No. It's, not at all, we just want to make sure you're all right. Where are you staying? Uh, Raynham. Raynham? Yeah. Okay, how did you get to South End today? Train. Okay, and when were you planning on going home? I'm not going home. You're not? No. Okay, not home to Raynham? I'm going there. You're going home to Raynham? Yeah. Okay, when are you going home to Raynham? Whenever. Whenever, okay. You've obviously had quite a lot to drink today, haven't you? Yeah? We're quite concerned about you. Yeah. A lady here just told me you were laying on the beach and the water was nearly up to your feet. Oh, uh, I know what's that. I was up to that. You're having a paddle, were you? I'm telling you. <laughs> okay. Can I suggest you start making your way home? Yeah. Yeah. You know so where I'm the gonna, railway station is? I'm going to go along there. Yep. Help there. Okay. Go on then, let me see that you can walk yourself safely uh, home. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> you haven't got anything to apologise for, you've done nothing wrong. You just had a bit too much to drink, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, the loads of us. Okay, I want to see that you can walk yourself without falling over. No way, it's died. Okay. Right. When did that happen? Christmas time. Right, that's not good, is it? No. Is that why you're drinking? No. Oh. Can I go? Yeah, I want you to go. I want you to start walking, see if I'm you gone. can keep walking. So I just want to make sure he's uh, not going to fall over or cause any problems up here. Clearly very drunk. He's banged his head, but he seems to be making sense. He knows how he's getting home and where he's going. I just want to make sure that you can actually walk without falling over again. Hey, I'm Bruce. We are. Quick Tango 53. Can I have a name, please? What is that on your shoulder? It's a parrot. Is it? A, 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 a sea bird. I'm just going over there. It's a I'm going to have a drink. Is that okay? What? Can I go? Can you go? Hello? Hello? It won't answer back. <laughs> <laughs> hey! Do you know what I'm doing? I'm representing the Geordie Nation. Okay? okay right. What do you think of me? Geordie Nation. Sorry? Geordie Nation. Yeah. What's that? Well, I'm right for sending them. Adios, amigo. Have a... That means goodbye, doesn't it? Yeah. I love you. Do you really? Yeah. I do. You'll have to join the queue. There's you're, lots of them. You're lovely. It's, it's only the drink that makes you think that. I'm going to be over there in a minute. I'm going to give you... I'm gonna, the lips are going on you. I think not. Why? <laughs> Hope you go home. Bye-bye. <laughs> Birmingham, early afternoon. Biker paramedic Steve Harris has had a call. It's to a gym just across the street. A woman's injured herself while exercising. With heavy lifting equipment and exercise machines, gyms have Hello. many potential dangers. <laughs> Hiya. Hello. Oh. I'm Steve. Hi, Steve. 
What's your name? Nina. Nina. Tell me what happened first of all. I was just crawling down and sort of lying on my back, twisting my legs to my legs. Yep. And just got like a sharp shoot, shooting pain literally down the side of my leg. And right. just couldn't, can't straighten it now and it's really hurts. Have you ever had a problem before? No, no, no. Normally fit and well. No meds, no tablets. No. Okay. And what was the exercise before you started your cool down? Rowing. Rowing. Okay. Right. I can see where you got your cold compress. Is that where the pain is? Yeah, it's kind of in my leg and sort of around that area. Okay. And how's it feel now? Now that you have sort of chilled a little bit. I can, I can lift it up and down like that, but yeah. I don't know if I can straighten it. Okay. And as I'm pressing it, how's that? It's a bit tender. It's yeah. a bit tender. The yeah. knee is the largest joint in the body. It's a complicated joint that has to deal with huge pressure and high impact, especially during sport. There are many ligaments and tendons which can be susceptible no to tears. Yes. And the kneecap or the joint itself can dislocate under Don't extreme force. That. We need to try and straighten your leg at some point. <laughs> you know, because you need to be mobile, you can't stop being no, for a, a tribe, you know. So, right. uh, I, don't, I really don't want to hurt you. I know you don't. You know. Maybe it's all right. So we're all oh, all right. Oh, that okay. clicks. I know it does. Oh. Ow. <laughs> I felt that. <laughs> Just clicked it back into place, though. Eh? I think you may have just clicked it back into place. You should be able to move that leg. I'm not saying it's not going to be pain yeah, free. But, but now I can move it now. Gentle. That jumped. Is it just, uh, well, it was under my fingers, I could feel it. Yeah. You, know. you never had a problem with your knee before? Yeah. Right. I mean, I don't, I don't know whether you've got something in there that, you know, like a, a little bit of floating cartilage, uh, which has sort of jammed the knee joint. As we've tried to straighten it, it's just popped back in. Over a little period now, I would hope that's going to pass the steams and rest. I, st I want to see you up on your feet. Right, put your weight on your good one. If you need a hand. Right, don't put any weight on it yet. If it starts to hurt, take the weight off. All right. Two steps forward. If you can't walk, I can't leave it. There was something that was jamming the uh, knee joint. It could be that she's got a little piece of loose cartilage which had just moved and uh, locked the joint. And as we've tried to straighten the leg, it's just clicked out and gone into back into place. If she's got a problem with the knee now, then it may be over a period of time that this happens again she's going to need to see a, a GP. They may advise x-rays and uh, possibly having a look at the knee joint, seeing what's causing it. Still to come, PC Steve Clements on the case of an insurance mystery. It's not my fault that I wasn't insured. It's not my fault. You're only short. It is your fault. And Mark oh Hayes is called to a case of severe rectal bleeding. Early Friday afternoon, and the call comes in to paramedic Mark Hayes. We're going to a job, uh, just a couple of minutes away in Ladywood. Um, 70 year old gentleman uh, in uh, a tower block um, that uh, is bleeding, and that's as much as we know. The address he's been given is just a mile from the city centre. Mark's perfectly placed to hit the road in seconds and slip through the daytime traffic. He's on scene within three minutes. Hello. Hello. You all right? Yeah, for my granddad. Yes. Okay. So, your granddad's not well then? No, he's bleeding. He's bleeding everywhere. Lots. Lots, yeah. Right, okay. He's just lying there on the floor. How long has he been there? Since six o'clock. This morning? Is this morning, yeah. But so he knew something wasn't up because he didn't, he usually rings me in the morning and we okay. rang him, we rang the house phone, we rang the mobile, there's no answer. Who's up there with him? My mom. Your mom, okay. The man's been lying on the floor in his flat for over six hours. Oh dear. Hello down there, what's your name? 
Tony. 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 All right. It's okay. immediately clear that Tony's passed a lot of blood and blood clots during the night. His daughter-in-law fills Mark in. He had a um, camera up the uh, back, back passage. passage, camera down the uh, stomach, and they found polyps. Okay. They cut them off. Yeah, uh, yesterday. Yeah. yeah, five o'clock yesterday. Polyps are fleshy growths that can develop all over the body, in the colon, stomach, or even the nose. How old are you, Tony? Uh, 77. 77. So I just want to cover the blood up to nail down. Okay, is it running freely from you, Tony? Just gushes. Okay. Just most importantly, I want to check on your blood pressure before we do anything. Mm. All right. Have you got any pain at all? Mm. Yeah. Okay. On a scale of one to ten, ten being the worst pain ever, the pain that you've got at the moment, what score would you give it? About six. About six. You've got a bit of a bruise on your face. Have you? Um... Well, I clapped this morning. Right. Blacked out. I got this. Right, so you've got a bit of pain in your tummy at the moment. Yeah. And did you go in as a day case? Yeah. yeah. Whilst you're lying there, your blood pressure's quite good. Yeah? yeah? I'm sure if we sit you up, you're going to go dizzy and you're going to lose uh, a lot more blood. So what I want to do, Tony, is I want to pop a, a needle into you. Do you suffer with anything else normally? I've got bowel cancer. Bowel cancer, how long ago was that? Uh, six years this year. What happened? What treatment? And did they give you the all clear, or are you still yeah, receiving treatment? I give you the all clear. Uh, so the bleeding this morning. What time did that start? Yeah, all night. All night. Yeah. Okay. Mark, just to make you aware, he's on warfarin. Okay. Um, this gentleman's uh, obviously got a severe hemorrhage. Um, attended hospital for a day case yesterday. Gentleman's come home and started bleeding, he's gone to get out of bed, he's collapsed, he's hit himself on the side of the uh, the bedside cabinet, but as we can see there's, there's blood absolutely everywhere. So we need to get him out of here, um, preferably keeping him as flat as possible, um, because as we sit him up, if we force any clots out then that's going to make him bleed again, and we've got an added complication of the gentleman's on warfarin, um, an anticoagulant thins the blood, so he's going to bleed. Um, a lot more severe than you or I would. Sharp scratch, one, two, three. Okay, we're done, well done. We'll have you off the floor in a second. Once Mark's got a line into Tony's arm, he can give him fluid to increase his blood volume, which will keep his blood pressure up. Keep nice and still, just a second. All right, I think we need to start getting a move on. Lift your head up for me. Okay, ready to on, ready to go. The tricky thing is getting you out now. All right. Okay, right. Tony. Good man. Yeah. That's it. Well done. Straighten your legs, Tony. As much as you can. That's it. And what we're going to do is just lie you back now. All right. Yeah. Okay, over we go. Before they leave the flat, Mark needs to estimate how much blood Tony's lost to tell the doctors at the hospital. I reckon there's it's probably 100 mil or so where he lies. What do we reckon there? Five? So we're looking about 600 odd mil blood loss. Okay. A healthy man has about five litres of blood. Tony's lost more than 10% of his. If he'd not been found, he'd carried on bleeding so severely, it could have been fatal. Losing 40% of blood volume means the heart's unable to beat properly, leading quickly to coma and ultimately death. These type of jobs, we call them training school jobs because when I was at training school, you can guarantee the instructor would give you the tricky scenario going. Um, you know, this chap lives in a block of flats. Um, he's stuck between the wardrobe and the side of the bed. We don't really want him walking. We don't want him uh, standing up. So better move some of the furniture around. And, and between us, we managed to get him nice and flat and, and get him down to the vehicle. Yeah. I'm going to travel with him, then we can just roll the scoop. Yeah, All right. Um, pop you in the front, if we can. All right, if you just sit in the front for us. All right, we're going to be travelling then, Gav. All right. Sharp cut, sir, just checking your sugar level. Because the gentleman's quite cold to touch, there's a severe blood loss. He's been on the floor since at least 6 o'clock this morning. We've alerted the hospital. Um, obviously, he needs to receive treatment uh, straight away. Um, we're literally three, four minutes from the hospital, so we should be there any minute now. Yeah. Just 
relax your head back, just nice and still, and we'll uh, we'll get you in there. Um, I'll go through and hand over if that's all right. Okay. This chap's got a few things to be thankful for. One's family, um, that they've come round to check that he's okay. Um, two, these tower blocks in winter can be pretty cold places. Um, he'd been on the floor for probably, what, seven hours. Had it been winter, no heating, he'd got no sheets on him. Um, you know, uh, hypothermia could have got him. It's hard to say, you know, how much longer would he have been able to hold out whilst he's on the floor. Um, because I think the fact that he was so still, um, you know, the blood managed to um, build up, form a clot, and if you like, that that, that acts as a plug um, and, and stop the hemorrhage. Um, so he's been a very, very lucky man. In Essex, police are clamping down on people driving without insurance. UK police seize over 1,500 vehicles every week. Scouring the Essex roads today, PC Steve Clements. Back at base, his colleagues are monitoring ANPR cameras, automatic number plate recognition. They'll radio through details of any vehicle that is flagged as having no insurance. Clem's got a target. Fire ship. We stand over here so we don't get run over. First, got a call to you to have to say anything, but make harm with defence. We do make many questions, some that you later line in court. We do get rid of today. I'd like to ask you, do you have any insurance for the vehicle? And how long ago did you get it? Two years ago. How many? Two years. What, the insurance? Yeah. Okay, they only last one year. For two years. They only last 12 months. Sorry? They only last 12 months. Yeah, I got it two years ago. What, your insurance? It's renewed. Okay. And it's renewed again. Give me your ID with all. Credit card, debit card, um, put your name yeah. on. Right, so you've owned the car for two years. Yeah? Yeah. And you renewed your insurance in December last year? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Is that the policy? And what's your first name? What's the P stand for? <laughs> I'm going to phone a company called the Mo Insurance Bureau. I don't know if you want to turn your engine off, save a bit of fuel. Okay, well, I'll do those checks. No, no, it'll be a little while. It's an Audi A3. He said he insured it on the 8th of December last year. Okay, then, I'll ask him if he owns that one as well. I'll, I'll do a check on it first, find if he owns the both, and then I'll give him the bad news. Do you own any other cars? Do you own any other vehicles? No. Yeah, that's what the MRV just gave me. He said it's a uh, Vauxhall Astra. He's insured on the Vauxhall Astra. He changed the vehicle in December last year from this Audi. Don't own a Vauxhall Astra then? Huh? A Vauxhall Astra. Silver Vauxhall Astra in December. Yeah. Never yeah, sure no Vauxhall. Because that policy was changed from that one to another vehicle in December last year. No, 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 I was thinking of getting a Vauxhall Astra. Yes. Call them. Yeah. I'm thinking of getting a Vauxhall. How much will be the insurance? No, you gave them the index and, they and you changed it and signed a policy. No. I, I, this vehicle's not insured. <laughs> That's funny. I paid 230 something pounds on this vehicle. Yeah. And they're telling me I'm not insured. No, because it was transferred to another vehicle no. in December last year. Could you have a look at that and see if there's two policies on there? Because he says he doesn't own that vehicle. He's saying he only phoned up and asked for a quote on the Astra not to change it. Yep. Yeah. So what they're saying, though, is he is uninsured at this time, though. Because they've sent him the policy and he's not questioned it. Right, OK. All right, Michelle. All right, cheers then. While Clem's on All the right, phone bye. to the Motor Insurance Bureau, the driver's making his own call to the insurance company. Basically, they're saying you are uninsured, you have, and you have to make a complaint and then investigate it. But as far as they're concerned, they sent you a policy with the details of the Astra on it for insurance, and you accepted it. OK, so you chat on them, but the vehicle's going to be seized today for no insurance, OK? Uninsured drivers cost other drivers over £500 million a year in extra premiums. Enough money to buy 25,000 police motorcycles. Are you in Union Insurance now? Yeah. Yeah? Doing it now. If they ask you if they ask you've got any endorsements, you've got to tell them you've got six. Six points. OK. 
Okay, you have to tell them that because that's what you're getting. The thing is, the car is insured now. Hang on. It's insured. You know, let me, the, let me, you know, let me you know it wasn't my fault. I, I always. Hang on, let me, let me finish this. Yeah. That the time you were stopped, yeah, you were not insured. All right. So on this one, this there, is, sh there should be some consideration somewhere here. It's but not you, my you're fault. You're only short. It is your fault. It's, how is it my fault? I'll explain it to you. Okay, I will explain I, it to you. I've spoken to the insurance company. But you can actually speak to them now. Yeah. And you you had me speaking to them. Yeah, I said to them that you were it's not. not like, it's not like I wasn't insured at all. You weren't there was There was a Mr. Sunning somewhere. So there should be some consideration no, somewhere. You're not insured. I know I'm not insured on this car. Yes. But I'm insured on somebody's car. Yes. Which the car is being owned by somebody. So there should be some consideration if you, somewhere. If you, Come on. If you've had an accident yeah, okay. with somebody, the other person has to pay out because you're not insured. You haven't but, got third party insurance. Okay? That's the minimum you require to have okay. in your car. Yeah. And you haven't got any. I know I'm insured. I've been paying 230 something pounds on this car for nothing. Okay. For the past two months. Right. So at least there should be some consideration somewhere. It's not my fault that I wasn't insured. It's not my fault. Why isn't it your fault that you're not insured? Because, you know, I paid. I paid for Okay, so you paid insurance. I'm doing the right thing and then here. They contacted you by saying you paid for it, didn't they? They sent you your policy in the post. Exactly, because okay. it was agreed on the phone. Okay, and when you got the policy, you haven't getting you read it all. I did not read it. It's my fault. I didn't check. Right, so it was yeah. your fault then. There should be some consideration here. Sign just says, confirm your details. Okay. So you're going to need to produce your driving license for me at Grace Police Station within the next seven days. Okay. This is a £200 fine and six points on your license for driving whilst uninsured. £200? Yes. £200? Yeah. Now, if you work out what you've been saying, you've not allowed me to talk to you. Okay, talk you've not allowed me to do my paperwork. Me. So I'm, how can I'm, I make any decisions for any consideration? I'm, I'm disturbed. Okay. Please I'm do. trying to do this part Please of it. Do. Do. Yeah. Well, yeah, you haven't allowed me, have you? You wait there. Clem brings the insurance company himself. Meanwhile, the recovery trucks arrive to take the man's car away. But on this occasion, Clem might call, not have any vehicles. I'm waiting for the phone call back. If they insure, then I'll aim to take it. They're good at taking when it comes to giving, they don't give. Right, okay. Okay, so they're happy. All right, I'm not going to seize the vehicle, although he has been dealt with for the no insurance. Okay, cheers him. You're not taking your car today, all right? And they're happy that you're insured, okay? So seven days to use your driving license, yeah? And 28 days to pay your fine. But you've got to be careful with them sometimes that if they do a credit card payment over the phone, is is the payment accepted and stuff like that because you've still got even with a credit card payment or a debit card you've still got five days before it's actually legal he had technically not insured because he was insured another vehicle he'd been paying each month they confirmed he paid each month but for another vehicle so it wasn't a case of i didn't believe he wouldn't pay it i believe he has paid that and he will continue to pay it so i'm happy that he will remain insured um, the other times that possibilities is if somebody didn't have any insurance at all they could make a payment over the phone, drive around the corner and cancel it, or empty that account so there's no money in it, and then they don't pay out anything at all. But he can now go back to the insurance company. They've said to him he can go through a complaints procedure, and they will look into the fact that may, they may reimburse him for the other vehicle. They don't have to. They're not legally bind to. He was his, his responsibility to check his policy, and he didn't. The driver says he's going to contest the case. You don't remember Still anything come. about yesterday A at diabetic all. man's lost his memory in Birmingham. We well, yeah, woke up this morning at the table table back to speech and actually about just up to six. Late afternoon, Birmingham. Paramedic Mark Hayes is receiving a call from control. Yeah, received, thank you. We've got a platform. No worries, thank you. We're off to Birmingham Moor Street Railway Station. Uh, not sure what we're going to though.
when Mark arrives, the police are already on scene. Hello there, you're all right. How you doing? Yeah, Sean Fella. Um, we had an accident last year where the boy, I think, cracked a new school yeah. and stuff. We had it back to the head two days ago. Yeah. Uh, he's been complaining of headaches, blacked out. Found himself in London this morning. Uh, he woke up. Doesn't know how he got there. This morning he's been complaining of headaches, seen stars, uh, that kind of stuff. So, uh, did you say he's diabetic as well? Yeah, he's diabetic. He's diabetic. So have you actually blacked out today? Well, yeah, I woke up this morning and uh, just sitting, sitting down on the pavement outside Baker Street Station about just after six. Uh, Do you remember going down to London? No. So what's the last thing you remember about yesterday? I can't, I don't know. You don't remember anything no. about yesterday at all? The last thing I remember before that was, back, was uh, just going home after back in here. And that, when, when was that Wednesday, exactly? Uh, Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening. About, really about six and where were you when you banged your head? Just say, uh, about 50 metres from my home. Where'd you live? Churchill, Sh Shop Scratch. Do you normally get a bit confused? No, not really. Not really? Other than the headache, have you got any other pain at all? No, not really. When was the last time you had your insulin? Wednesday. What day is it today? It's Thursday. Or oh, sorry, Friday. Friday. And where are you at the moment? More Street. More Street. I'm, I'm, I'm all right now. Just slight, a bit of a slight headache now. And have you taken anything for the pain? No, not really. OK. Right. Hello. How are you doing? You are right. We'll carry on doing some checks on the back of the ambulance. We just have a walk with my colleagues and... Uh, all right. Yeah. While the man goes on to the ambulance for more checks, his story has left Mark baffled. I ain't got a Scooby-Doo. He's woken up outside Baker Street train station in London this morning. He can't remember anything at all about yesterday. Uh, he's a known diabetic. He suffered a, head in a minor head injury by the sounds of it on Wednesday. Um, he's not been taking his meds and his blood sugar's high. He's hyperglycemic at the moment. Um, so we're just going to do some more checks. Okie dokie. What's your blood sugar normally? Usually about 8 to 9. 8, okay. So on our monitors, when they come, it's above 30, so your blood yeah. sugar is very high. But if you've not taken, since winter, yeah. I mean, obviously you need to go to hospital. You need fluids. You need insulin. So um, mm. we're going to pop a needle in, put some fluids up. No. All right. Yeah. Because your blood sugar is so high. Since your previous head injury, have you had any problems with with memory? That, no, not really. Not that you'd remember. No. But, you know, has anybody told you that you know you seem forgetful or? No. So this gentleman's got high blood sugar, hyperglycemia. Now, that's not going to cause his memory loss. Um, what's more than likely, it's the fact that he's had the memory loss that's caused the hyperglycemia because he's forgot to take his medications. Now, to have no recollection of what you're doing or what you've done in the last 24 hours um, and to find yourself waking up outside a train station, you know, um, he could have been mugged. Um, he could have walked off the edge of a platform, could have walked in front of a car. There's so much that could have happened. You, you know, you just don't know. Um, and uh, he's never going to know, is he? He's lost 24 hours. Hassan was admitted to hospital. His infection was a lot more serious than expected and had spread to his blood. He's still in hospital, but making good progress. Steve got there just in time. Mary recovered well from the house fire. Her you wanted to get on the bike then, didn't you? Oh, don't put any Nina's weight on knee it. gave her no further so problems. Right. She's now going to the gym regularly again. All right. Tony's rectal Have bleeding stopped while all? in hospital. He needed two blood transfusions, yeah, okay. but made on a, a good recovery. Ten, Didn't need surgery, and is now ever. back at home. What score would you give it? And the man who'd lost his memory was treated in hospital for his hypoglycemia and has had no further problems, but still has no recollection of how he came to be in London.